Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom from the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, don't you know, which you can be part of. Hit the sub button right now. Subber, hit the sub button so you can be part of the live. I just like to talk to you. We're going to be doing a trade again. We've been doing lots of these, haven't we? Oh, my Lord. I did Lynn. Guess what? I did Hampus Lindholm last night. He got traded today to the team I thought was pretty quite likely to take him, the Boston Bruins. So the video, I was already doing the video, and the next day he gets traded. And now we're going back to another Boston Bruin too. We did JT Miller. We did Carey Price. We traded Carey Price. We traded uh, Toffoli before he got traded, and we sent him to Calgary, which he went to. We're pretty good at this. Not too shabby. We also had, we did a Giroux one before he got traded. Actually had him going to Colorado most likely, but Florida was on the list, and Florida is where he went yesterday. So sub yourself up and get part of this fine frolic. This is part of all, part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, which you can be part of as well. Uh, by hitting the sub button, liking this video, all of that stuff like that. Okay, we're going to be looking at two articles about Jake DeBrusque and the possibility of him being traded and when he may be traded. We're going to look at Jake DeBrusque himself and see what you're getting for the product that they're selling. Uh, maybe discuss a little bit about why he might have been asking for a trade here and what kind of return we could get. And seven teams that I think could be in on Jake DeBrus. So let's get at her, shall we? All right. Here's the first article. A guy I really enjoy, Jimmy Murphy. He actually is part of the Ice Guys. You might want to check that podcast out if you like doing handicapping or maybe putting a little bit on games every once in a while. Actually, I do that too. I have a show called bpowpicks.com. Not a show, it's a website. bpowpicks.com. You can be part of that. We do extremely well. Actually, tonight we did amazing. But anyways, enough of that. DeBrus still wants trade. Bruins ready and willing. Jimmy Murphy is the writer of this and he gets this information from a pretty good source. TS insider LeBron who is uh, who also is on uh, The Athletic which I have a part of. He's a very good writer as well and also a pretty darn good insider. After speaking with DeBrusque agent Rick Follette, there has not been a change of heart LeBron reported uh, Tuesday evening. This means the trade demand is still in place for DeBrusque to hopefully, in his case, get traded, get a trade out of Boston by the March 21 deadline. So he would like to, to be moved by the deadline. Still, that hasn't changed. Uh, uh, after the Lindholm trade, basically, DeBrusque became the hottest name on the circuit. He's out there. He's still a good player. Um, he, uh, not only did Valet Valet squash any speculation that Jake DeBrus may want to stay with the Bruins, he made it clear to LeBron that the Bruins also remain, remain committed to moving their hottest player at the moment. So DeBrusque is really hot right now. DeBrusque is not happy there. It seems like it might be a salary issue. And we'll look at that when we look at the Boston Bruins and some of the things that might happen. Um, also, I don't know if you've noticed this, the Boston Bruins haven't been doing, have never really been known for keeping their young players happy. Uh, Sagan got moved out of, moved abruptly, moved away to Dallas. Apparently, Sagan wanted out. Hamilton, Dougie Hamilton, all of a sudden, boom, not long after they traded him. Phil Castle got traded from Toronto. Why? All of these cases, when you read into a lot of the articles, and I'm not going to go into here because this is going to be a long enough video as it is, there was an ex 
expressed concern from the player and towards the player for their lifestyle. Boston, the Boston Bruins really don't want players heavy on social media, uh, partying. They want family guys that are committed to just playing the game and keeping clean. And I mean, to a point where I think maybe it might be over the top, but that's me. I don't know. And apparently it's also Sagan, Hamilton, <laughs> maybe DeBrusque. I don't know. But it seems to be a common thread that happens here. Regardless, they both are interested in moving home. Boston just picked up Lindholm today, who I had as a high person in my last video that I did, high team from my last video that I did that Lindholm would go to. And I imagine now they're going to focus on the possibility of DeBrusque being traded. So let's look at Jake DeBrusque, shall we? Jake DeBrusque. He is uh, 2015 Draft pick, they had three first-round picks in one of the deepest draft picks. I think every Boston fan knows what I'm talking about here. They got Jake Saboro, who's injured right now. Sinition, who also wants to be traded because he can't, he doesn't feel like he's getting enough time up in the bigs. And Jake DeBrusque, who now wants to be traded. Could have had Barzal, could have had Connor, could have had Shabbat, could have had a whole bunch of players. Everybody knows about it. It seems like a disaster now, but here we go from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He's uh, he was picked 14th overall. Six foot um, and six feet, 188 pounds. And honestly, when I see him play, he plays much bigger than that. He seems bigger than that. Tell me in the comment section if you feel that way as well. Biggest sticking point here, I think, is that his base salary or his caps cap is at 3.675. And in order for him to get, uh, he has to get, he's a restricted free agent. And this year, they have to give him a uh, qualifying offer. Just almost didn't spit that out. Which is going to put him in the four some million dollar range. So they could do it for one year. That being Boston or the next team. Or they can try to work out a long-term contract with him at that price point. The problem is, Jake DeBrusque in Boston has been more declining than inclining as far as what he's done from the time he's come into Boston. 43 points in 2018, 42 in, uh, in 68 games, not too shabby. But then a slip in 2020, a big slip in the COVID era, I guess you can call that now, year in 2021, and yeah, wasn't doing well to start off with, is starting to hit a stride a little bit now for Boston, but wants out. Now, those numbers are probably not $4 million player, four and a half, certainly increase number player, dollar value numbers, but as we just read in the article, it's possible, the agent said, that they can work out a deal with the team coming for a lower contract or some sort of contract that's short and gives them an opportunity to show what he can do and maybe get a bigger contract later. So that's all out there. Now, uh, Boston Bruins, what are they looking for? Well, they just picked up Le uh, Hampus Lindholm, which really makes up for a lot of their defense. Uh, the next thing we got to look at is, uh, of course, Boston is going to have to sign Patrice Bergeron in 2022-23. Honestly, I have no idea what Patrice is going to do here. I don't think he's going to retire, but can he keep around that 6-8? I hope so. I hope he's willing to take it for Boston's sake. If he stays around that 6-8, apparently Lindholm is going to be signing around six and a half. I uh, just heard that on right here. Let's take a quick look at it here. I just saw it on Pro Hockey Rumors. There we are. Boston Bruins expected to extend Lemp Hamp Hampus Lindholm. And the number seems to be around $6.5 million for possibly even eight years. So taking that into account, look at their cap space, $14 million. 
they give six and six, that doesn't leave too much to pay somebody. So even if they did want to keep DeBrus, they could be in difficult times uh, next year. So it could be, you know, salary definitely does have a part of it. And whoever is coming in is probably going to have to deal with that problem as well. There's ways they can work around that. They probably can let Mike Riley go, uh, use one of their younger players, use Connor Clifton more or what have you. So to give themselves a little more space. Um, they Also, if they bring in another player, maybe they can move Craig Smith for another $3 million. There are some ways to work around it that if they like the player, they could turn out good. So we said that DeBrusque was from Edmonton. All the buzz in the land is about DeBrusque possibly going to Edmonton. His father, Louis DeBrusque, I don't know if you know him, but he played for the Edmonton Oilers, works for the Edmonton Oilers. He's from Edmonton, so we'll look at it first. I don't think it's a highly po possible way thing, but I wanted to bring it out there you for Boston Bruin fans and for Edmonton Oilers fans. And if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan, sub yourself up. I do this content all the time. After the trade deadline, I'll keep on doing trades. It could happen in the summer. What teams will do in the future, free agency, all of those sort of things like that. Also, I'll have my playoff picks, of course, and tons of frolic, my friend, plus my live show. So come check it out. Okay, for the Boston, for the Edmonton Oilers, we know that the Edmonton Oilers are pretty much capped out. We also know that they have a guy named Evander Kane on the roster right now that likely they're not going to be able to sign next year. He's putting up 18 points in 22 games. He's going to be a free agent at the end of this. I don't know if you know anything about Evander Kane, but money might be something he'd be interested in. <laughs> he's had a little bit of difficulties with the gambling. Looks like he's got it under control, by the way. Freaking awesome. Killer for you, Mr. Evander Kane. Isn't a problem in the room. Is not having any problems at all. I love to see guys rebound get back on their feet and get going. I chuckle a little bit because I had my own problems, but, and we made her through. Didn't we, Evander? Yes, we did. All right, so he'll be gone. So they might be able to use a left winger down the road, right? He's a hometown boy. The issues in Boston seem to be something that could be rectifiable. And um, honestly, he's still got a lot of talent. He's only 24 years old. The question is, what's the return? Now, what I'm hearing is Jess, Jesse Puglia Harvey. Well, that's a tough one for me because I really love Jesse Puglia Harvey. He's a great two-way player. He's a very good two-way player. He's only 23 years old. He's got a contract coming up right now. What's he going to be asking for? Honestly, I'm not totally sure what he could get right now. He's only 23. I think he's probably not going to get much more than $3 million a year, which is what a le less than what DeBrus gets. I wouldn't do that deal. If I'm going to do this deal for Boston, the only thing I would be looking to do is possibly Fogel. And I didn't uh, do what I wanted to do real quick here. I'm doing this on the fly, by the way, so excuse me if it's not totally all put together. These, union, these videos can take a long time. Anyways, uh, I think they would be looking for a right winger. They have Jake DeBrusque playing right now, and he's actually a left winger, but they got him playing on the right side. I think they would be trying to find a right winger if they can. But with Edmonton, I don't see a right winger besides Jesse Pugliarvi available and that you would take in return for him except for Derek Ryan, but I don't see that really moving the needle too much for Boston to take. So I think it would be something they'd have to take a left winger back with like a guy like Warren Fogel. Unless you want a defenseman, you can take Tyson Berry off our hands. Tell me if you'd like to do that, Boston Bruins fans, because uh, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I'd be fine. Um, when Nugent Hopkins comes back, though, we're not going to, I mean, he's, it's, we're going to be a little bit racked up. Maybe we tried to brusque on the right-hand side. So it would be a difficult trade to make. And really, they, I think Edmonton would only do this deal because DeBrusque is from Edmonton, and we have a hard time getting players to play 
in Edmonton. So if they did deal, do the deal, I believe they would try to use DeBrusque on the right-hand side and see how he works. Tell me what you think, Boston Bruins fans. How does he play on the right-hand side? I haven't seen him play on the right too much. And they would probably only give up like Warren Fogel and uh, maybe a prospect like Benson, uh, maybe Dmitry Samarukov after losing a few of your the Boston's prospects. In the Lindholm deal, they might actually not mind that. And they get a player, NHL player that's ready right now in Warren Fogel that comes in a little cheaper than DeBrusque. So we know the cap issue that happened there. He's got 22 points in 61 games this year. Not too shabby. Um, not too much less than DeBrusque. May work. It's not my favorite play, but it could. Tell me, Edmonton Oilers fans, what would you think about DeBrusque and Edmonton? Boston Bruins fans, what do you think about the return? Uh, maybe you could get think of something else that I don't see here, but I think that's basically what you're going to get. Next, Nashville Predators. Okay. I have not heard the Nashville Predators part of any DeBrusque conversation, but I'm doing this based on the fact that I really think that Boston could get the return that they may be looking for in DeBrusque. Now, people are going to say, well, how come we're not getting much more than this for DeBrusque? Boston kind of ruined their leverage when he asked for a no, for a trade. It's There's question marks in organizations' minds. When a player does that, it becomes difficult to get a return. And DeBrusque hasn't been knocking it out of the park for the last couple of years. So another guy that hasn't been knocking it out of the park is Luke Cunning, 24-year-old. Not about the same size, doesn't have the same point production. In fact, you could say that maybe he's even struggled a little more than DeBrusque. But they could it may they may not they may be able to get him and another player because I really think that um, Nashville would be interested in a guy like DeBrusque. Uh, Eli Toivonen, a young guy that has been really not struggling to, that could be a return in itself. Eli Toivonen <clears throat> could be used in this deal. And Nashville is looking for bigger guy to play, guys that play big like DeBrusque. They love guys like that. He just seems like a guy that would fit in the organization's way of being here. Um, they've also taken guys that have had problems in the past, like Matt Duchesne. They've shown that they're willing to. Michael McCarron in Montreal went for a long, long time and couldn't make it into the lineup. Uh, had some issues there in Montreal, and they gave him a shot, and look, he's in there now. So uh, they might be looking for some room for Philip Tomasino next year, who's, had, who's really outperformed a guy like Luke Cunning. So you get your righty in Luke Cunning. And, you know, maybe add a little bit and get Eloy Tobin in too, somehow. I don't know what Boston would add. Tell them, help me out, Boston Burns fans. You gave up a heck of a lot to get Lindholm out of uh, Anaheim. So I don't know if there's much in the cupboard to add. But if you could try to get both of them somehow, I think you could have a pretty good play here. Or Luke Cunning and a guy like Jeremy DeVries, who has been to have, finding a tough time getting into the lineup in Nashville, but in Boston, uh, you have he's some he's a good depth guy to add there when you're going to need depth because you just gave up a lot of your prospects. So I could see something like that happening. It seems like a fit to me. Tell me what you think, Nashville fans. Also, sub yourself up. I do this content all the time, and you can also talk to me on my live program if you're all subbed up to me as well. Uh, Boston Bruins fans, tell me what you think. What would you want from Nashville if it, that was the case? Next, Chicago Blackhawks. And the Chicago Blackhawks, I'm going to be quick here. This is a pretty simple play as far as I'm concerned. There is actually possibly two players from Chicago that might work here. And one of them is, I think the big one is, would be Dominic Kubalik. Dominic Kubalik has, base, has been asked, said to be on the market right now. You want to take a good look at him, Boston Bruins fans? Chicago fans, if you like this content, sub yourself up. We do this fine trade stuff constantly. 
We love it. And after the trade deadline, it will continue. We'll be doing free agent stuff and everything. He's coming off a 30-goal season in his rookie campaign. Then he slipped to 38 points, and now he slipped to 21 points. Not great to see a guy slip like that, but if you happen to notice, DeBrus slipped about the same way. So this could be an opportunity. for Chicago to just kind of trade a player who they've had a difficult time with for a player that they've had a difficult time with um, or that the Chicago has having a bit of a difficult time with. I haven't heard of Chicago uh, of uh, Kubelik actually asking for a trade. This is more about the fact that he's 26 years old. He hasn't really knocked it out of the park. And Chicago has said that they're going to have a complete rebuild. 26 isn't all that old, but there's not much use in signing a guy to another contract, especially if they're having a difficult time with the contract, if you plan on rebuilding anyway. So getting a guy like Jake DeBrus gives both players a fresh slate to work with. You can work where They can work out separate deals. You can give Kubalik a chance in the playoffs and see if you want to keep him or you know work out a deal with him as well and you have somebody that might be happy to be in Boston. So I thought that wasn't a bad deal. Another guy that they were talking about is Kelvin DeHaan. It's kind of on the block right now. The thing is he would be possibly a rental and Boston just got Lynn Holm. So I don't think that would be the guy on. I think it's going to be Kubalik and possibly Uh, where'd he go? Kurashev, Philip Kurashev. Why not give him a shot too? He hasn't been working out there as well. Kubalik and Kurashev. Give them both a shot. Maybe you throw in a pick or whatever. What do you think there, Sh Chicago fans? Would you like a DeBrusque for, for Kubalik? Would you like to keep Kubalik? Would you like, don't like it at all? Boston fans, tell me what you think. Next, Seattle Kraken. The Seattle Kraken. Uh, they're looking for young players that can continue to grow in their organization and all those sort of things like that. And they got a couple players that um, they got from the expansion draft that really haven't worked out all that well for them, or is not as well as they thought. Um, one of them being a guy that I think would be really interesting for Chicago in this deal. And that is Mason Appleton. Mason Appleton started to get his offense going later, but for some reason, he just didn't seem to be a fit in Seattle. Uh, he did much better in Winnipeg the couple of years that he was there. In fact, I think it really hurt Winnipeg to lose him. But some reason, different things happen in different organizations. Maybe Appleton's not really as big as he, keen as he thought he was on being on an expansion team. He's looking at 26 years old and no chance for a cup in the future. Maybe behind closed doors, he's even said, you know what, I, I'm not sure this is for me. So he had 12, he had 25 points in 56 games, which is pretty much what DeBrusque had this year, last year. He only had 16 points this year and he got off to a really rough start. Um, I personally really still like him. I think he could really work out in some other or some other organization. And I think the guy like DeBrusque with the fresh new start and the offensive upside he has, which is more than Appleton's, would be something that Seattle would like to give a shot at. They have the uh, the time, they have the they have the time to give to DeBrusque to be what it, the best he can be. And I think DeBrusque would be happy to be there. Right now Seattle would love to have Younger guys who would like to, you know, build through their organization. So maybe even Mason Appleton isn't the only one you could player you could get there. You could get you could, could just take a nice guy like Riley Shane for the playoffs. You never can have enough centers like this um, that can win faceoffs at important times. All of those sort of things. Like, he does all those little things that everybody loves. He always finds himself on a roster, and he's a great playoff guy. So you could get Mason Appleton, 
Remember this kid's 6'2", 193, man. Tough kid. Big kid. For DeBrusque and, you know, Boston's going into the playoffs right now. They could use a Riley Shea on back. You never have enough guys like that. Player depth in the playoffs. Tell me what you think, my friends. Tell me what you think, Boston fans. Seattle, would you would you dig that idea? Seattle fans. And sub yourself up, Seattle fans, because this kind of frolic, this kind of content is continuous on my channel. I love doing trade talk, free agent talk. We're going to be looking at the draft. I'll be doing playoff predictions. I have, I'm a, I'm a professional handicapper too. You can check me out at bpalpicks.com and uh, sign yourself up for that. And we can, can, we can make you some money that way too. So, and lots of things you can do at bpalpicks.com. All right, next San Jose Sharks. And I think San Jose would be very driven. Honestly, they're not talking about it. You're not hearing about it uh, with San Jose. But they just signed Hurdle uh, when I thought maybe they might not do something like that. And it seems like they don't want to do a rebuild rebuild. What's that? So getting a young player like DeBrus with upside and maybe a new opportunity, new way New organization. He has a possibility. He was a top number. He was a first round pick in 2015. They can turn him around, and he could be a great asset for them. Okay, they got. They have some actual cap space with some of the moves that they've done. Next year, they're going to have a ton, but they're going to have to sign some of these guys. But nothing too cray cray that they can't get over. So they may. I think they could sign DeBrusque. And I haven't heard anything about San Jose being in on here on this, but I kind of wonder why not. Like I, I, I really think this, I really think DeBrus could be something that would work out well for them. So where would he fit, and what would Boston get in return? I'm thinking Alexander Barabanov is a free agent. He would be, he could be, he could be a rental. However, he's only making a million dollars a year. And I'm pretty sure based on it, this has been his best year he's had so far. Alexander Barabanov came from the Toronto organization. I liked him. I always liked him. And I always wondered why Toronto didn't play him enough, play him much. So San Jose picked him up last year. He got seven points in nine games right off the bat. Then there was the... You know, there was COVID and stuff like that. There wasn't much play. But this year, he got 31 points in 53 games. Not too shabby. He can put up some points. Um, it looks like he has some pretty decent upside, even though he's 27 years old. Kind of a late bloomer type guy. And I think he can be signed for less than what DeBrus makes. And I think San Jose would appreciate the offensive upside of DeBrusque and his youth at 24 over a guy like Barabanov. Because he's sort of rentalish, though, it might not be the only player that you could get. And the other one I would be looking at is Nick Bonino for the same reasons why I said Riley Sheehan, but even more. Nick Bonino is a playoff beast. If Nick Benino is not getting an opportunity to be in the playoffs and San Jose likely is not, it's a shame. And he should get the opportunity. And I would pick him up. You got him again next year. Heart and soul, underrated defensive player. He's still only 33 years old. Boston wants to still be a contender. It's guys like this that make you a contender. I love it. I love the move. Cap space may be a bit of an issue, but I'm sure. I think Boston will be able to work it around, work around it, and San Jose gets a good young guy to add to that hurdle line, and they can work on continuing whatever they're doing in San Jose. Because I don't know, actually, I don't know. San Jose fans, sub yourself up and tell me in the comment section if you enjoy this uh, trade or if you'd like to speak to me or join my live. Tell me what you think about this content and what we're doing. Next, 
Philadelphia Flyers. I thought I said seven. I got way more than seven here, don't I? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, no, seven. Okay, Philadelphia Flyers is the next one. And the Philadelphia Flyers are trying to, I think, do a tweener rebuild where they just pick up as many young players that can play right away as they can. They traded Giroux for Owen Tippett, who should be ready to play very soon. A first-round pick, which is great in 2004. And I imagine they want to keep on adding to that. So where would Jake DeBrusque fit here in Philadelphia, and what could they give in return? Now, we said that Boston would be looking for a right winger. I don't think there's a right winger to be had here in the Philadelphia deal. I think it would have to be Oscar Limblom. Oscar Limblom, you know, he went through cancer and all of those sort of things like that. Probably has some upside, but DeBrusque is a teeny bit, is a teeny bit uh, younger and plays a lot tougher. And I've heard over and over and over and over and over again in Philly, we want to get tougher, we want to get tougher, we want to get tougher, we want to get tougher. So you could throw as Oscar Lim, you could give Oscar Limblom back and, uh, you know, possibly like, hey, Nick Sealer or something like that to just give you that depth for the uh, offs. Give Austin some depth on the D, which is always important in the playoffs. Sorry, trying to spit that out. Or maybe a guy like Isaac Radcliffe or Igor Zamula, who's still fingering it out in the AHL. Something like that for DeBrusque. It's not my favorite pick and play in the world, but tell me, Philadelphia Flyers fans, I'll you keep on saying you want to get a little tougher. I think DeBrusque plays a lot tougher than Oscar Lindblom. I think that might work out. I'm not sure if that's the best deal for Boston or not. Finally, 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 the New Jersey Devils. And I bring up the New Jersey Devils mostly because they are having some serious problems with a guy named Pavel Saka. He can play center. He can play left wing. Boston could use another center too, by the way. We haven't even talked about a center as an option here in any of these deals, mostly because it's hard to get a center for a winger, especially when you don't have all that much leverage because the player's asked to be traded. But it appears like even Pavel Zaka has asked to be traded. He's way bigger than DeBrusque. I don't think he plays all that much tougher. In fact, I would say DeBrusque plays a little tougher. But he's had some pretty different, de decent point production. And a change of scenery for both, you know, sometimes that just changes everything for both players. And, you know, he's had 32 points. He had 35 points in 2021, and he slipped. His best season is 35 points in 50 games. He was expected to do better than this, and that's really what the problem is. Now, I don't know if there's commitment issues or what have you, but it seems that both Pavel Zaka isn't a fan of New Jersey, and New Jersey isn't all that fan, much of a fan of Pavel Zaka. He's 24 years old, about the same age as DeBrusque. You could do a swap here, see how it works out for both of you. And New Jersey gets a good young player. Boston gets a good young player that's had problems in both organizations. They both have plenty of upside. I just think the deal straight across might work out well. Not to mention Pavel Zaka can play right now. And Boston needs a player right now because they're trying to win a cup this year. So tell me what you think, New Jersey fans. Would you take DeBrusque for Zaka? Do you think you should get more for Zaka? Boston, should you get more? Tell me about it. Sub yourself up to my channel. Comment in the comment section. I want to hear from you. I love hearing what you guys have to say about this. I know a lot about the NHL because I, I, I do it for a living. But most of my knowledge comes from going on Facebook groups and showing these videos and discussing the players with fans like you that know a lot more about their teams than giving credit for, honestly. I quite often get people ask me, you know, uh, it's are, like, are, are you an expert? Or, you know, I don't even know you. Like, are you not even an expert of the game? 
You know what? Have you listened to some of the quote, quote, people that call themselves experts out there? I quite often don't see the expert part. I don't know about you guys. And maybe you don't see it in me. But I see quite often a lot of expert parts on fans who are fans of their teams that pay attention to their team and have something to say about it. So I'd love to hear from you. Tell me in the talk to me in the comment section. Sub yourself up. Thanks for listening. That's my full 42. That's all I got to give for you today. Until next time, when we'll have more trades, free agency, playoff predictions, and all that fun stuff. Have a great day. Okay, bye.